Hey everyone, I'm Jennifer Whitaker, trauma specialist, and today I'm going to talk about coercive control. According to the Women's Aid Federation of England, coercive control is an act or a pattern of acts of assault, threats, humiliation, and intimidation or other abuse that is used to harm, punish, or frighten a victim. And according to medical news today, coercive control refers to a pattern of controlling behaviors that create an unequal power dynamic in a relationship. These behaviors give the perpetrator power over the other, making it difficult for them to leave or get out. In other words, Coercive control is a form of abuse. It might be domestic abuse. It might be intimate partner violence. It could create a toxic workspace, but it describes a pattern of behavior that a perpetrator uses to gain control and power over another or several others by eroding their autonomy and sense of self-worth and self-esteem. And research into coercive control abuse suggests that this form of abuse is often a predictor of future physical violence. And it's not just men who engage in coercive control, which I think is a false stereotype that we have out in the world, that it's men who perpetrate this type of abuse. Well, according to Medical News Today, a 2015 study found that in the United States, 36.6 million women and 33.1 million men will experience some form of coercive control by an intimate partner during their lifetime. Now that whittles it down to intimate partner, partner violence. So that doesn't include other forms of coercive control. So that's roughly 11% of women and 10% of men in the United States, according to the current population. So think about your network, your friends, neighbors, your family, your colleagues, um, you know, anyone who's in your sphere. Statistically speaking, one or more of every 10 of the people that you meet in your life throughout your lifetime is likely to experience some form of coercive control. And that's why this is an important topic. Um, there's still a lot of research and studies that need to happen to get more accurate statistics and numbers, um, and we're well on our way. Well, welcome back or welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer Whitaker, trauma specialist. And if you're finding value from my videos, please give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, and be sure to hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, let's get back to coercive control. So if you Google the word coerce, you'll find that the dictionary defines it as a verb that means to persuade an unwilling person to do something by force or threats, or to obtain something by using force or threats. And the origins of the word or the etymology of the word go back to Latin with co meaning together and our care meaning restrain. So in a relationship, the threats and force that define coercion can refer to any pattern of oppressive, dominating behavior that uses harm to steer the thoughts, feelings, actions, and behaviors of another or other people. And according to Christine Scott Hudson, a licensed psychotherapist in the state of California, the biggest warning sign of coercive control is the loss of ownership. She says, your money is no longer yours. Your time is no longer yours. Your space is no longer yours. And your body is no longer yours. You begin to have less and less say over your life, your time, and how you spend it. And this is what cult expert Robert J. Lifton calls milieu control, which refers to controlling multiple if not all aspects of another person's environment. Coercive control doesn't only happen in intimate partner relationships, like I said a few minutes ago. It can happen anywhere out in the world. It could be in a toxic 
situation at work where you might have a toxic manager or a toxic boss who's trying to micromanage and control everybody on the team. There might be dreaded neighbors who try to control everyone in the neighborhood by complaining about how you decorate your yards or what you put in your landscaping. Um, bullies, authoritarian families um, fall into this category or families that include one or more people, you know, maybe a parent or a sibling or a child with narcissistic personality styles. Um, this could include toxic friendships. Um, you might encounter it in groups that you attend, like Bible study groups or yoga studio classes. And don't get me wrong, not all of them are like this, but there are some, and it's worth having your feelers out and being aware of. Um, Self-help gurus, large awareness group trainings or retreat type trainings. Um, these can all have aspects of coercive control. So keep your feelers out. And the best way to protect yourself from coercive control is to know what signs to look for. So signs of relationships where coercive control is a hallmark factor in that relationship will include some of the following red flags, um, many of them, and maybe in some relationships, even all of them. So relationships that include patterns of threats, which could include violent threats. Um, patterns of insults, constant criticism, humiliation, ostracizing, um, being isolated from friends and family, and the whittling away of contact with people outside of the relationship, um, using intimidation to control the other person. Um, monitoring of activities where one person's constantly monitoring the activities of another. Where were you? Where did you go? What time did you leave? What time did you get there? Um, Controlling of finances. Financial abuse is huge in coercive control relationships. Um, gaslighting, policing the lifestyle of another person or forcing the other person to live by the rules of the perpetrator. So the other person has no choice in their lifestyle or establishing rules or boundaries for themselves. Um, and another hallmark can be controlling the sexual relationship that can be common in intimate partner relationships, where one person might be um, talked into or convinced into doing things that they would normally back away from and say, no, that's, that's not me. A removal of autonomy and a removal of personal choices um, can define these relationships. And there's often jealous accusations um, that might even border on paranoia. Um, there might be blackmail, um, a deprivation of access to help or medical care outside the family structure or the relationship. And this can even escalate into assault and physical violence. So keep in mind that you're going to spot repeating patterns if it's truly a situation in which you're uh, enduring coercive control. And sometimes life circumstances and situations can lead to behaviors that, you know, temporarily might look like this. Um, but in the absence of those long-term ongoing patterns, it's very possible that it could be situational. So let me give you an example of what I mean here. And let's take financial control um, as a, an example. So a person who's trying to control your finances will use many tactics over time. And those a tactic tactics will start to ramp up and become more and more extreme over time. So let's say your partner swoops in and starts to can take, take control over your finances, which eventually forces you to depend upon them to ask, ask, maybe even ask for access and permission to spend your own money that you earned at your own job. Um, you might not be allowed to make financial decisions on your own. You might have to ask permission before spending money you know, if you're going to spend more than $300, you have to ask my permission because we're in a relationship. Money might be used as a punishment or reward system. Um, and if you didn't agree to these situations, but you find yourselves in them, then there could be something seriously wrong with the relationship. However, if you've been in a pretty supportive and loving and cooperative, securely attached relationship, and all of a sudden your spouse loses their job, then it can become a life circumstance that really ups the stress level and the overwhelm in the relationship that requires more money, um, control over the money versus 
and spending versus an ongoing pattern of abuse. So I'm not saying that everybody handles these highly stressful situations and relationships in ideals, ideal ways. And that's where it can start to look like coercive control, but start to be aware of that. And just notice, is this an ongoing pattern or is it just a situation that if we you know, bear with each other, we can work through it. And if you find that you are in this repeating pattern, know that there are ways out of these controlling situations. Now to the victim, it might not feel like it. You may feel like you're trapped or caged, like you have no choice, nowhere to go. And that's by design. The way out is going to be a little bit different for everyone. However, in most cases, and I acknowledge not all, it can help to keep a journal because a written record of dates and times and what happened, if you ever happen to need it later on, it's going to carry more weight if you track the incidents in a written record as you go, rather than trying to look back later and remember. Now, I do acknowledge that in some relationships where coercive control is happening, this is not going to be a viable option because if you try to keep a written record, whether it's digital, um, like an online journal or even a paper journal, your, your activities are monitored so much that you're not going to be able to do that. So know your situation enough to know what behaviors are safe for you to do. Um, whenever possible, tell someone, tell someone that you trust and whomever you confide in, please be sure that that's not one of the coercive controllers flying monkeys because there's a lot of overlap between narcissists and people who exert coercive control over other people. Um, if at all possible, if you are planning to leave, plan your escape, see if you can find somebody trust it, that you trust who can help you. And you can always call the National Domestic Abuse Hotline to get help. The hotline number for the National Domestic Abuse Hotline is 800-799-7233, or you can simply text the word START to 88788. All right, everyone, I hope you found this information helpful. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Um, a little external validation on these videos never hurts. Be sure to hit that bell so you don't miss any other videos. And please comment below. I know that this is a generalized list of what to look for in coercively controlling relationships. Have you ever experienced coercive control? And what signs of coercive control have you endured that I didn't include in the list? How did you get out or how do you plan to get out? Please comment below and share your experiences if you're up for it. All right, everyone. I hope to see you next time. Happy self-discovery.